Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brian from Kingdom Hearts Union Cross Nation. In today's video, we're going to be going over the new Black Friday deals and looking at it from a purely gameplay and value standpoint, uh, help you guys determine which of these banners are actually going to be the best for you to pull for. Now, just as a quick little disclaimer slash update, whatever, uh, I just want to mention real quick that yesterday's video was more meant to be along the lines of like how I felt towards the Black Friday deals and not necessarily so much as advice, but just more of how much I felt about it. Um, I do want to point out as well that I completely realized shortly after uploading the video that I that I probably um, that I probably worded quite a few things pretty badly. Um, not in a bad way, but more in the sense like I just didn't, I wasn't able to like iterate what I was trying to say that well. But my overall message that I was just trying to get across in the video was the fact that I felt like, I feel like the deals aren't that good. They're not really that incentivizing for me uh, to want to take advantage of that much, okay? Um, at least not outside of what I usually do anyways. That's the thing, like I'm not really doing anything different. These feel more just like of bonuses that are just kind of randomly happening with a Black Friday name slapped on rather than like a deal that I actually want to go out and take advantage of. Okay, that's, that's kind of what I was trying to get across. Uh, and I'm aware that I probably didn't word things the best way to get that across in my last video. So, but other than that, let's go ahead and get started with the video. Uh, I'm sure quite a few of you would be interested in hearing what I have to say. And spoiler alert, chances are, if you've already pulled from these banners, you might have pulled from a banner that probably wasn't the best one to pull for. Just throwing that out there, just because of the fact that I have a pretty good idea of which of the banners a good chunk of people have already pulled for. So as a quick recap as to what type of banners are currently available, we currently have the Supernova Rick Replica banner that comes with the Prime Kingdom Hearts 2 Yuffie medal. We have the Supernova Sephiroth banner, comes with Prime Kingdom Hearts Cloud. Supernova Key Art 19, comes with Prime Maleficent. And we have the Key uh, Kingdom Hearts 3 Riku EX Plus, and then we have every single Foreteller. Now in regards to which of these banners are probably worth looking at the most, let me just point out real quick that, and chances are most of you don't know about this because they didn't make an announcement about this in Global. They only made an announcement this in, in JP, which is how I know about it. But they already mentioned in the JP version of the game for the same type of Black Friday deals, although the JP version of the game has better Black Friday deals than Global does. Shocker. Although they did mention in their version of the game that the stained glass medals are actually going to be reprinted and released again uh, sometime this coming week. So, and it's very possible that those stained glass medals as well will also have the Black Friday deals or, yeah, deals attached to them too. Very possible, not guaranteed because we haven't seen them yet, but it's very possible. And even if they don't have the whole, let's say, like a VIP half your jewels back type deal attached to them, I would still recommend chasing towards the stained glass medals above anything else. For the most part okay now out of all of these banners okay let me quickly give a quick rundown of what i think about each of them we'll start off with the supernova banners just because they're easiest completely ignore the supernova medals do not chase the supernova medals it's not worth your time or money or emotional stress you are much better off depending on what type of medals you have just pulling once according to whatever ones you need and just ignoring the banner, the rest of the banner, okay? The, probably the one banner you can literally completely ignore is the Supernova Key Art 19, just because Prime Maleficent isn't really that great unless you really need a good rating medal. Uh, the other two though, the Prime Kingdom Hearts Cloud, that's a really good Prime medal, and I, you, I definitely recommend you at least have one copy of that. And the Prime Kingdom Hearts 2 Yuffie medal is also pretty good as well. However, the one thing I do want to point out that people may be forgetting about Prime Kingdom Hearts 2 Yuffie is that Prime Kingdom Hearts 2 Yuffie, and I'll go into details so you guys can see this as well. Prime King, Kingdom Hearts 2 Yuffie doesn't have an ability that avoids or adds counters, okay? Uh, if we take a look at this, she does not have that ability at all whatsoever. There is no count plus minus zero or adds whatever counters. There's none of that. So when you use her, she will affect counters, which is kind of not what we want, but her ability is really good. 
Um, so because of that, it is worth getting one copy of her just because of how good her ability is. Now, on the other hand, about the foretellers, I'll kind of talk about the foretellers in general, and then I'll specifically talk about each of the foretellers individually. Okay, so in general, in regards to the foretellers, the foretellers are pretty much already being kind of uh, outclassed slowly, okay? At least in terms of abilities. In terms of abilities, they are already being outclassed all right and just to give an example now i'll start going into uh the individual stuff if we talk about era i know a lot of people initially went after era even to even like with the black friday with the return chances are a lot of people still went after era i'm sorry to tell you but era is honestly becoming more and more trash <laughs> the main kind of allure about era was for the most part pretty much because of the fact that he has the 120% guilt boost that he provides for the rest of the setup. However, the problem with that, and we're already starting to see it, is that we're already starting to see metals come out left and right now that are coming with the 120% guilt boost uh, as well. In which case, the fact that it's going to be fairly easy to get the 120% guilt boost, even very, very possibly within the next month, uh, without needing era. Era is literally in regard in that regards completely pointless to have now just for the 120 percent guilt boost just because other metals were going to be coming with it and that was the main gimmick about era that had any value for him the other one that has a little bit of value for Era as well is the fact that he completely debuffs all psm defense debuffs instead of just his respective attribute of power uh, which can also be pretty nice but to be honest, with the way that the current state of metals are, you don't really need that. You can just use a prime metal alone if you really want to. Because um, the problem is that even though you have all of the PSM debuffs that he provides, you still need another metal to provide all of the respective attribute buffs. The PSM buffs that he doesn't provide anyways. In which case, uh, there's no point in really having the era because... Even if you get the debuffs, you're still going to need another metal to get the buffs anyways. And chances are, with the state of how like Prime Metals and a lot of the EX Plus Metals are right now anyways, I kind of provide both the respective attribute buffs and debuffs for that attribute anyways. In which case, Era has literally become uh, compared to the other metals come out. And overall, all of the Foretellers are still the strongest AoE damage metals in the game. Okay, so even if his ability is trash now, uh, he's still a very strong damage metal at the very least. So it's not a complete waste if you happen to have gotten him already. Now, in regards to HD Ava, now I've written articles about these guys already. Um, but in regards to HD Ava, the plus seven uh, PSM defense buffs that she provides are really not that great. Uh, I've iterated this before in the past. HD Ava EX Plus is not a turtle metal. Now, I say that it, as in like, technically she is a turtle metal because she does provide strength debuffs as well as she does provide defense buffs, okay? That alone uh, technically classifies her as a turtle metal. However, when I said that she's not a turtle metal, I'm saying that she's not a good enough turtle metal to worth being actually considered uh, a turtle metal in a typical basis that you would actually want to use her in. The main reason for this is because the fact she provides no general defense buffs at all whatsoever, which is the primary, like that's literally the core aspect, as well as general strength debuffs these days as well, for any turtle strategy out whatsoever. PSM defense buffs and uh, even strength debuffs, like PSM strength debuffs alone, are not gonna do that much at all whatsoever. They help, but they're not nearly as significant compared to general defense and general uh, strength buffs and debuffs. Realistically, if you were to take HD Ava into a low leveled uh, event or quest, you're probably gonna kill the enemy in one shot anyways that you don't need the PSM defense buffs or the, or the PSM strength debuffs. Uh, and if you bring it into a high level event, the buffs and debuffs that she provides aren't enough for you to be able to turtle through it anyways in the first place. So quite literally, this is this is why I keep saying that HD Ava EX Plus is not really a turtle metal. Um, just consider her as another type of damage metal for magic upright, in which case 
you're better off taking a look at the HTMV instead, just because of the fact that she actually has a better ability that lasts for multiple turns in regards to Magic Upright. Um, and this will help transition into the other three foretellers, uh, which are Envy, Gula, and Sed. They're all pretty much exactly the same, just with their abilities lasting for multiple turns instead. Now, I said it before in the past, but out of the five foretellers, these three are the best out of the five, and that is primarily because of the fact that their abilities last for multiple turns, which is not only great for PvP, but can still be used for the rest of the game as well. Like I've mentioned multiple times already, just because they provide only one attribute is not a big deal because you can just use like a prime metal, such as for example, if I happen to be using HT Envy, that's going to provide all of the upright buffs and debuffs that I'm going to need, as well as the general strength buffs and the general defense down debuffs that I'm going to need for any type of setup that I use. And the only thing I'll be missing are the attribute buffs and debuffs, in which case I could use a prime metal, such as like the prime Kingdom Hearts cloud that you get from the Supernova Sephiroth banner. Very easy, okay? Like that, that, like you could do that on a like power magic setup. So like, let's say you're using Mughal Glory for whatever reason. You could easily just have Prime Cloud provide all of the power buffs and debuffs, and then just let the HD Envy provide all of the other buffs and debuffs that you're going to need. The same thing can be said about all of the other uh, foretellers. Now, the one thing I do want to point out though, is that compared to the foretellers and the stained glass metals, the stained glass metals are by far have the best ability in the game so far. Out of all the metals in the game, the stained glass metals have by far the best buffer and debuffers in the entire game. The only things lacking about them is the fact that they are the second strongest AoE damage metals in the entire game. The foretellers, as in as is shown in the shop, are the strongest AoE damage metals in the game. However, the difference between them isn't really that big to the point that like it kind of doesn't even matter. The same thing can be said about the 110% guilt boof boost that the stained glass metals provide as well. Because of the fact that they provide 110% guilt boost and not 120% isn't really that big of a deal. As I've shown in multiple videos in the past for things uh, guilt boost related, a 10% difference doesn't really add too much to a setup. You literally will only get like a couple million extra damage at best to be honest, with just 10%. And that's only if you're already using some of the best metals in the entire game. So in that regard, don't worry about the 10% difference between the guilt boosts. Now, one of the main reasons as to why the stained glass metals are also considered one of the best is largely because of the fact that they provide both upright and reverse full amount of max buffs and debuffs for multiple turns as well. Their entire ability lasts for multiple turns on top of having overwrite. They're very similar in a way to the uh, Envy, Gula, and Ased medals, except they have the added benefit of having a 10% guilt buff uh, to these guys on top of providing the reverse buffs and debuffs for multiple turns as well. Now, I don't know if you guys have been noticing quite recently, but we've been pretty much getting medals lately that are more or less just watered down versions of the stained glass medals. So even with the prime HD King Mickey medal that we have recently, this is quite literally just a watered down version of the uh, stained glass number seven metal that we just had recently. It literally provides the full reverse debuffs for two turns. That's literally for the most part, most of what stained glass number seven does. The only thing different about HD King Mickey from stained glass number seven is the fact that he doesn't provide max reverse buffs, which is a lot easier to get these days compared to the debuffs. So that's not nearly as bad, but he's also not as a hard hitting damage metal compared to stained glass number seven. Even when comparing the Prime Kingdom Hearts 2 Yuffie medal that we just got recently with the Supernova Riku replica banner, she as well also provides reverse debuffs and upright debuffs as well. It's very likely we're going to be seeing more and more medals as these months come along that start kind of replicating what the stained glass medals do until we get to the point where a new Kyrie medal comes out. I know a lot of people's primary concern when they when these first medals first came out was that the fact that they were worried that the stained glass medals were going to get quickly outclassed uh, compared to the foretellers. But the problem with that logic is the fact that because of how similar the foretellers are to the stained glass medals 
anyways, but the stained glass models have an actual better ability compared to the foretellers. If the foretellers were to be outclassed anyways in the first place, whether it be by multiplier, because remember their multipliers with the foretellers are pretty similar anyways in the first place, they're only like like one or two numbers off, or by ability, in which case the stained glass metals do have better abilities than the foretellers. If the stained glass metals get outclassed in any way, shape, or form, that just logically also means that the foretellers are going to be outclassed at the exact same time. And also means that the foretellers will just be outclassed even harder compared to the stained glass metals. So just to reiterate, if you're in need of a good buffer or debuffer meta, I highly recommend you get the stained glass metals instead. It's expected to come out sometime this coming week if we were to go along with the JP kind of schedule that they have going on right now, which is very possible it's gonna be coming out at around the same time for us too. On the other side of the spectrum, if you're in need of a good damage metal instead, um, especially for speed upright, I should add, because there currently isn't really that many, uh, or hardly any, I should say, actually strong, uh, speed upright damage metals in the game that don't affect counters or at least add counters to enemies uh, Then in that case in terms of a damage metal Kingdom Hearts 3 Riku EX plus would be uh, Your go-to banner just because of the fact that even though he doesn't have uh, the strongest AoE multiplier in the game his AoE multiplier is still pretty damn good uh, on top of the fact that he also has that damage condition of when there's only one enemy left or zero parts left, he will do more damage. Uh, so he still has a pretty high multiplier in that regard. On top of the fact his ability is almost pretty much just straight up, just a prime metal ability. Like it's almost word for word what the prime, what the tier five prime metals do. The only difference being is that he provides a 100% guilt buff compared to like a 60 or 80 percent or something guilt buff he's quite literally just a tier 8 version of a tier 5 prime metal okay but for speed upright and speed upright is in desperate need of more good damage metals that also add or avoid counters because uh, as of right now the only real like prime metals that we have in the game that avoid or add counters in the game are prime mrs incredible and prime dash as far as i'm aware and those don't really count because prime dash isn't really that hard of a hitting metal and his ability only lasts for a few attacks anyways whereas prime mrs incredible is a turtle metal in which case the best skills to have on her even though she can do a decent amount of damage, not the best amount, but a decent amount, the best skills to have on her anyways are going to be turtle skills, such as uh, defense skills, um, or even in some situations, depending on what you have, maybe even like second chance and such, or uh, if it's for PvP purposes, maybe even triple threat or, you know, status ailments. Um, those type of things. Essentially, you're not going to have an attack skill on her for the most part. Um, in which case that also means she's not gonna really count so in that regards the only actual like speed upright damage metals that we have in the game that uh, Don't affect counters or at least add them in some sort are the stained glass number nine HD Gula EX plus as well as Kingdom Hearts 3 Riku EX plus so one last time before I end this video if you need a good buffer diva for metal Get the stained glass medals. If you just need a really strong damage medal, get Kingdom Hearts 3 Riku EX Plus. And if you're pretty much near bro broke, just try and help guarantee your copies of at least the six star versions of the prime medals that come along in the Supernova Sephiroth banner and the Supernova Riku replica banner. But other than that, that's it for today, guys. I would love to hear what your thoughts and opinions are in the comment section down below. But if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe, and hit that bell button. It is the best way I know when I upload more videos such as this one. My name is Brian from Kingdom Cross Nation, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.